die. Well, then let them die. <laughs> I mean, shoot. It's a puzzle dungeon. They're, they're, and they're ignoring it and they're just plowing forward. Let them die a little bit. Any advice for working with players who don't like to wait for the explanations in a puzzle dungeon? I told them that technically time is frozen while I describe, but it didn't work. <laughs> You're dealing with impatient players, not impatient player characters, so it doesn't matter if time is frozen in the game. The players are impatient. They want, they, they're the ones that want to get through this. And normally I wouldn't care, but it's a puzzle dungeon and they plow right over the clues that they need to not die. Well, then let them die. <laughs> I mean, shoot, it's a puzzle dungeon. They're they're and they're ignoring it and they're just plowing forward. Let them die a little bit. If you let them die, then, well, <laughs> they might start paying attention, but I think, I think there's a bigger question here. The bigger question is, it sounds like you're saying players, if you have, let's just, let's just say that all of your players don't like puzzle dungeons. If your players don't like puzzle dungeons, then why are you running a puzzle dungeon? Would be my question. Or do you have like five play five players and Three of them enjoy the puzzle dungeon and want to play it, and the other two don't want to play it, and they're the ones rushing ahead and dying. Well, then just let them let them sleep in the bed that they make, rush ahead and die. All right. And then these three players can play the dungeon and carry their bodies or something. I, I don't know. That's probably just that's probably bad advice. You might not want to do that. Um, but if you have all of your players that don't like the puzzle dungeon, then like then don't run a puzzle dungeon. If my players hate something, I'm not going to create a whole dungeon full of it. But I'm assuming that there are probably just some that don't like it, which which leads me to my next point. Um, design dungeons with a variety of things in them. Don't just like. If you have a puzzle dungeon that's just full of tons of puzzles, just all over the place puzzles, then what's inevitably going to happen is you're going to have some players who enjoy it and want to play that dungeon. And you're going to have some players who hate puzzles. I personally hate puzzles. If you put me in a puzzle dungeon, I will be on my phone the whole time. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Is there anything to fight? Can I fight anything yet? Can I fight anything yet? I'm just like, I don't like puzzles. So if you design a if you design a dungeon that's only one thing, then expect some of your players to not like that thing and pretty much be bored for that whole adventure because that's the only thing in that adventure because it's, it's all about puzzles. It's the same thing if if you have an adventure that's all about traps and it's just full of traps, tons of traps. And you have and then some players are OK with exploring and looking and tr solving traps and bypassing them. But then you're going to have some players who are like, this is dumb. This is boring. I don't want to do this. So the point I'm trying to make is that when you design an adventure, you I don't think you should have just one big thing where it's like, ah, this this adventure is all about traps. This adventure is all about puzzles. This adventure is all about stealth and sneaking by everybody. You know, like I feel like when you design adventures, there should be a variety of things for players to interact with, to encounter. There should be some combat. There might be a puzzle. There might be a trap. There might be some role play, or not, not role play, social interaction opportunities with like the kobold cooks or something. And then you might have to sneak by something or other. You might have to like pick a lock. So it, when there's when there is a variety of things in an adventure, then you have things that appeal to all of your players. All of your players are engaged at one point or another. And if there is a puzzle, if there's one puzzle and there are two players who don't like puzzles, they're going to be like, oh, OK, it's a puzzle. No big deal. I can be patient because it's one puzzle. And I know that we're not going to have tons of them. 
And if you have players who just don't like combat, then, well, you know, the whole adventure is not full of combat. There's a variety, so it's not that big of a deal. You know, I can get through a combat. It's not a big deal. But if you have an entire adventure that's only combat and there's no social interaction opportunities, the talky talky bits, and you have a player who loves the talky talky bits and there's nothing of that in the adventure, that player's not going to be very satisfied with that adventure. So what I'm saying is design your adventures with variety so that there are always things in your adventure that appeal to all of your different player types and their likes and dislikes. Like that is the way you want to design an adventure if you're homebrewing it. Now, second point, second point. It's possible that you didn't homebrew this, um, that, you, that you, it's possible too that you're running, let, let's pretend that you're running a pre-made adventure that's just a puzzle dungeon and you, let's pretend that you even pitched it to your players. You even told your players, hey guys, I'm, I, I want to run a puzzle dungeon. Like it's just full of puzzles. What do you guys think of that? If even if all of your players are on board and they're like, yeah, that sounds great. There's a chance that it still won't go very well because they might still some of them might still decide that, oh, this wasn't what we thought it was going to be. It actually isn't what we want. You know, it's only it's a one trick pony. It's a one trick pony. And if the trick doesn't work, it fails. The whole the whole pony dies and like plunges off a cliff or something. So I, I had a I had a person once told me that they had a they had what did, what did they call it? It's one of those adventures that's a meat grinder. They had a, a classic meat grinder. It, the entire module was a meat grinder and they wanted to run this for their players. And they spoke with their players and they were like, yo, I want to run this module. It's a meat grinder, which means that death is very dangerous and death happens a lot. What do you guys think? And the players were on board with it. They were like, yeah, that sounds great. But once they got into that module, that meat grinder, they're just like, whoa, no, this this we don't like this. This is not what we this isn't what we thought it was going to be. We we want out, you know, so there's always the chance that you pitch something, too. And if it's a one trick pony, then they might not like it, you know. So, yeah, I said a lot of stuff there. I don't know if I answered your question or not. Any tips for that? Um, Spice things up. Stop with only the puzzles. If you even if even if you're running a pre-made adventure that's only puzzles, you can homebrew it. You can make there be variety. You can put different things around that aren't just puzzles. You can just you can just take out some of the puzzles like like. Let's pretend that there are 10 puzzles in the adventure. Pick two of them that you think are the best and leave those in. Take the rest out, gut it and put different game elements in there. Or if you have a puzzle dungeon, Instead of just running a big puzzle dungeon, you could take those puzzles and put them in different dungeons and different adventures that you run elsewhere so that there's more variety. So you could use those puzzles. People could encounter them, but not in like big. It's like it's like if all you ever eat are potatoes, you're going to get tired of potatoes after a couple of days. So if all you're ever doing are solving puzzles, you're going to get tired of solving puzzles after not too long. It's like you need some steak with that potatoes. You need some like, I don't know, carrot puree, whatever. That was a great example. Yeah. So I don't know if I answered your question, but I gave you a bunch of words and I feel that counts for something. <laughs>